What's going on, Clutch? Squat! What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Duck. It's your boy, Ross. And this is in the Clutch. <laughs> you was about to say Clutch go rogue, weren't I you? I was. We not there yet. We almost there. We almost I there. Was. You almost got me. But it's cool. We man. almost uh, there, man. Um, Nah, man. We got another interesting video for you guys, man. Hope you've been enjoying the long form content. Ross, who are we checking out today, man? All right. We're checking out how North Korea finally made it impossible to escape. Uh, from real all right, real and real that's real. the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen, because you know how uh, things get. <laughs> nah, man, it's it, they, it's 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 hard for the people out there to try to leave that the situation that they're in. They made it that way, and if you are successful, North Korea is the only oh, country in the trying to play the video. But if you are successful, it's you know, kudos to you. You had to go through a lot of things to get to that point. But if you're not successful. And you get caught not only are you screwed your family is screwed and your future generation is screwed too yeah that's the wild thing bro like they they, they make sure that the seed doesn't come out yeah bro it's it's very wild so we're gonna get right into this one man let's get into this man world today where it's illegal for any citizen living there to leave without receiving prior permission from the state Doing so is legally considered to be treason by the North hey, Korean that, government. That looks tired. And if you as attempt hell. to do so and are caught, oh, you may march it all in unison. Yeah, like with the legs up, with the holding the gun. You better fucking do it. That's literally what it is. Do it. Be punished with a lengthy prison sentence in a hard labor camp or even sentenced to execution. Ooh. Even moving about within North Korea's territory is difficult and strictly regulated by the state, as you need official documentation and permits just to legally move from one internal province of the country to another. North Korea is almost universally regarded by just about every organization in the world to have the worst human rights record on the planet, with yeah. no contemporary parallel. All men in the country are forced into serving a minimum of 10 years in the North Korean army. Free That's speech is non-existent, wild. and the only media providers are all owned by the state. Yep. As recently as 2017, Amnesty International estimated there that. were around 200,000 political prisoners being held in camps all across Ooh. the country, who are often subjected to slave labor, torture, and summary executions. Yep. Not to even mention all of the other prisoners in the country for non-political related crimes. One can be sentenced to a life in prison in North Korea for merely being related to someone who actually committed a crime. That's fucked up, bro. So, because my cousin decided to leave, I'm just chilling at the crib. Next thing I know, these niggas come in here with guns. You're under arrest. Wait, what did I do? You're related to the nigga that tried to leave. Wait, what the fuck? That's my second cousin removed. That's hey, hold on. Wait That's a minute. his life. Come on, what is it? Come on, God. stop resisting. <laughs> that is so. Yo, cousin, can Quit get resisting. you locked up. Oh my! So it's nah, that's fucked up. Oh, I'm, bro. I'm packing. Nigga, I, I ain't related to that nigga. I don't know that nigga at all. <laughs> Such as an infamous case that only recently came to light by way of the U.S. State Department of a two-year-old child who was sentenced to life in prison back in 2009. Hey. Oh, come on, fam. You gotta be That ain't even cool, bro. A two-year-old? To sentence a two-year-old that don't know anything about anything to life in prison? How? That is wild, fam. A two-year-old, bro? Snoop uh, don't even know what's going on. He's just eating his applesauce and you come in. That's how villains are made. Cutting off your gabba gabba. That's how villains are made, bro. That's fucked up, bro. Oh. Parents were caught by the authorities with a Bible in their possession. A piece of foreign contraband that had been illegally smuggled into the country. All foreign media and content from the outside world has been strictly outlawed within North Korea for decades, with various penalties being dealt out to anyone caught smuggling such content in, distributing it, or consuming it, up to and including life in prison and death. You North Korea is Bible, one of only bro. four countries remaining oh. in the world that routinely carries out public execution of prisoners, wow. the only others being Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Somalia. It also has yeah. historically been extremely difficult for any foreigners to get permission to get into the country. Nope. And whenever they have been allowed in, they are permanently placed under intense levels of surveillance the entire time they are within. And only I don't know why niggas want to even go. How the fuck Dennis Rodman? That's the craziest thing of all time. How shit. did of out of all people, Dennis Rodman gets the okay pass? I, I, I 
That's crazy. I don't understand. He loves this. Bro, that's insane. Like, yeah. This nigga can get a free pass. No one else can. What the? That's Dennis Robin. He's just different, bro. He did. Hey, he really like a. He he really different, bro. Someone said Ric Flair as well. Really? Why Kim Jong uh, Un is a fan of the Chicago Bulls? I didn't know. I I did, which is kind of crazy. How? They they can't even watch TV. Well, nobody well, he, else can. So, I, I, I bro, that's but how that's do they a, get the service. That's wild, bro. That WCW wrestling did a super event over there in the nineties with Ric Flair going up against Antonio Inoki, and it was a scary experience. Wow, Ross, don't you remember they held some WWE stuff in North Korea? It was on a uh, Ric Flair. Well, I, I, I didn't see the doc, so I gotta I, check it out. I may definitely have to check that out, but that's I know crazy. He on highly Robin, curated though. tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's for sure. If there's anybody that could probably save us from maybe getting attacked or him launching some shit, it may be that nigga. It ain't, it ain't gonna be our president. I can tell you that now. It'll probably, hey, call this nigga, did, tell this nigga to chill. Ch- did, did it? Call him. Dub, you met him before. You hit him up, bro. <laughs> do, do what I can. <laughs> Where they are only shown what the regime wants to be shown. Sometimes foreigners who visit are even killed when they run astray of any number of the regime's yep. arbitrary laws. Like Otto Warmbier, an American yeah, man who is bro. visiting North Korea as a tourist back in 2016, who was arrested after allegedly attempting to steal a propaganda poster from the wall of his hotel. Mm. A crime for which he was later sentenced to 15 years of hard labor in a prison camp. He was returned to the United States a little over a year later in a vegetative state with little explanation and died only days later. As a result of all of this, North Korea has long been regarded as the most isolated and secretive country that exists in the contemporary world and the most difficult country to get anything or anyone into or out from. Escaping out of the country or smuggling illicit material into the country has always been difficult for a wide variety of reasons, but it all starts with North Korea's rather unique geography. For many decades, the Kim dynasty in the country have worked tirelessly to essentially transform North Korea into a de facto island, completely separated and removed from the rest of the outside world. To their east and their west, this was already granted by geography in the form of the Sea of Japan and the Yellow Sea. Escaping out of the country across either of these seas is incredibly challenging because boats are very hard to come by within the country and the North Korean Navy maintains routine patrols all along the coasts, especially near to North Korea's southernmost territory is next door to South Korea. Yeah. South Korea itself, obviously, is the number one location the North Korean defectors attempt their escapes to. Yeah, mostly because not only is South Korea a vastly wealthier and more developed country, oh, but the damn. South Korean government also officially considers that all of the native Koreans of the entire Korean peninsula are her own citizens, including oh. all of North Korea's 25 million residents. That's like fucking Any Kane North and Korean who can make their way into South Korea is automatically considered a South Korean citizen. Oh, that tough. alone provides an enormous incentive to leave. Of all the North Korean defectors who've successfully made it out of the country since the 1990s, 34,000 of them have found their way down to South Korea, compared to only around 1,000 in Europe and only around 200 in the United States. Damn. Getting to South Korea directly has almost always been impossible because of the existence of the Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, that runs across the entire length of the southern border from coast to coast. Contrary to how its name appears, this is the most heavily militarized border anywhere in the world, through which hardly anything at all is ever allowed to pass. There are tens of thousands of troops on both sides who directly patrol the numerous lines of walls, fortifications, and barbed wire in addition to around 2 million landmines. Damn. North Korean Border Patrol has orders to shoot anyone who attempts to cross. Damn. There are 750,000 North Korean soldiers deployed within 100 kilometers of the border in the north. Damn. Another 450,000 South Korean soldiers, plus 20,000 American soldiers deployed within 100 kilometers of the border to the south. Breaking through this extremely imposing obstacle to get directly into South Korea has always been very dangerous and risky, which is why very few have ever successfully managed to do it. Historically, the comparatively easier but still extremely difficult path to escape out of North Korea was by attempting a run across the northern border into either China or Russia. At the same time, this was also historically the easiest border to smuggle illicit contraband into North Korea from as well. 
You see, North Korea maintains an official military alliance with China, and mm. while relations have often still been strained between the two, they're nothing like the outright hostility seen on North Korea's southern border. As a result, there is little need for North Korea to keep hundreds of thousands of soldiers deployed here, because the risk of an invasion coming from China is fairly minimal. Oh, Simultaneously, wow. North Korea's border with Russia is very tiny, at only about 17 kilometers. And North Korea's relations with Russia are also similarly warm, so there's never really been a big need to park soldiers along the small border here to deter a potential Russian invasion. Moreover, the North Korean border with China is massive. It stretches and winds for more than 1,300 kilometers as it generally follows the Yalu and Tumen rivers, through rugged mountains and forests that are mostly very sparsely populated. Thus, for most of North Korea's history, this long border in the north with China has been lightly patrolled and guarded, and so it has been fairly porous and relatively easy to smuggle both goods and people across. This was especially true during the winter months when the Yalu and Tumen rivers freeze over, enabling defectors and smugglers alike to simply walk across them, oh. or during the summer months when the river's depths are at their lowest, enabling defectors and smugglers to just easily wade across them. But the biggest problem with this route for defectors was that once they crossed the border into either China or Russia, they still weren't exactly safe. Both Russia and China have extradition agreements in place with the North Korean government, Damn. meaning that any North Korean defectors they catch will be treated as illegal immigrants rather than as refugees, and deported uh, back to North Korea, where they will damn. face immediate imprisonment and potentially even execution. That's why, That's South why Korea, for nearly the every defector who did escape across the border into China or Russia, the goal wasn't to stay there, but to eventually make their way into a neighboring safe country, which there are precious few of. Myanmar and Laos were always out because, just like China and Russia, they will immediately deport any North Korean defector they catch in their territories right back to North Korea. For the most part, that only left Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam as nearby safe countries the defectors could flee towards because, since South Korea considers all North Koreans to be their own citizens as well, these three countries will deport any North Korean defectors they catch to South Korea wow. instead. So the plan for defectors was to always cross the poorest mountainous border into China, and That's then wild. eventually, gradually, make their That's way- That's a whole roundabout way just Hell to get- Hell yeah, bro. Damn. They gotta go all the way not only if you are able to get out of North Korea, you got to make sure you don't get caught in China. And then you got to go all the way somewhere else just to get deported back Thailand, to South that. Korea. Damn. That's crazy. Based to Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam, where they would then immediately surrender to the local authorities there and get deported on a plane to safety and a new life in South Korea. Defections out of North Korea only truly began a spike, however, in the 1990s after the Soviet Union collapsed at the end of 1991, which had been the primary financial supporter of the North Korean regime. Then, with its primary financial benefactor and supporter gone, and heavy financial sanctions placed upon it by the United States, Japan, and South Korea, North Korea suddenly found its economy and agriculture unsustainable. With very little money and hardly any ability to import farming equipment or fertilizer, with food imports from the Soviet Union gone, with exacerbating droughts and floods, and with a base of less than 20% of their land even being considered arable in the first place, Damn. North Korea couldn't acquire enough food to sustain its entire population. And the worst famine in the country's entire history followed. Because of the North Korean government's incredible levels of secrecy, nobody really knows exactly how bad the famine during the 1990s was. But estimates range from about 300,000 deaths on the lower end to as many as three and a half million on the higher end, across only four years between 1994 and 1998. With masses of people desperate to escape from the famine, defections out of North Korea consequently began to spike. And, sensing an opportunity to make some money, a class of entrepreneurial smugglers in North Korea arose as well. Oh. They began smuggling in much-needed items like food and medicine, but also illicit contraband like Western and South Korean movies, oh. TV shows, and books. By the early 2000s, wow. thousands of North Koreans were successfully defecting out of the country every single year. And the vast majority of them were escaping across the northern border into China, making their way eventually to Thailand, Vietnam, or Mongolia, and getting themselves deported from there to South it's Korea. The the number of here. steadily continued increasing year after year, long after the Great Famine had ended, until they reached a peak in 2009. 
when a total of 2,914 North Koreans successfully managed to find their ways down into South Korea. Damn. The largest number to ever defect in a single year since the conclusion of the Korean War back in the 1950s. Defections out of the country remained high in both 2010 and 2011, with over 2,000 taking place each of those years. But then, at the very end of 2011, something different happened. The man who had ruled North Korea as the supreme leader ever since 1994 suddenly died in December, and his mm. son, Kim Jong-un, mm. succeeded him. And ever since taking power back then at the end of 2011, Kim Jong-un has worked tirelessly to crack down on both defections mm -hmm. and smuggling within his kingdom. Signal jammers began getting installed all across the northern frontiers and remote mountain passes to block out foreign cell and satellite signals. Intelligence monitoring of phone calls in the northern areas were increased, while more border fences were being built up and patrols increased. Simultaneously, things were changing in both Russia and China as well. In 2014, Russia signed an agreement no with North Korea that they would begin deporting <laughs> any defectors they caught in the country back, essentially eliminating Russia as a viable country for would-be defectors to escape into once and for all. Meanwhile, China began increasingly developing its own massive surveillance state apparatuses after the passing of the PRC cybersecurity law in 2016. Well, they start beefing Within it up, four bro. years right. from then, by 2020, the Chinese had likely increased the number of their surveillance cameras operating all China across the country for that too, to more though. than 620. Oh, oh, like, sure. You know these people are leaving there because of how extraneous the, the circumstances are. And come on, bro. At least bring yeah. it to South Korea. Yeah, nah. They said, nah. Fuck that. <laughs> That's wild. More than 12 times as many surveillance cameras operating across the United States, combined with increasingly rigorous monitoring of internet and cell services. Since China has always treated all North Korean defectors as illegal immigrants, these sweeping changes to surveillance in China made it far easier for the Chinese authorities to detect them in the country, while they were trying to make it across to the safer countries in Thailand, Vietnam, or Mongolia, and made their journeys significantly more dangerous and risky than they had ever been before. Or to compensate for the increased levels of risk that were developing, brokers and human traffickers within China who often helped North Korean defectors escape began charging more and more money to do so. Back in 2007, the average price that a broker in China would charge to help a North Korean defector escape to Thailand or Vietnam was around $2,000. A Damn. lot of money for the average North Korean, but still yeah. theoretically doable. But by 2012, shortly after Kim Jong-un took power, the price had doubled to around $4,000. Mm -hmm. By 2015, the price the brokers were charging had doubled again to about $8,000. And by 2017, Ooh. the prices were anywhere between $13,000 and $16,000 per each defector. For because each. most North Koreans earn Damn. less than $2,000 a year, saving Damn. up those kinds of sums Wait. to escape would take them years or even... Bro, they Did make I hear it. hear that right? Yeah, less than two k a a year, bro. And you trying to leave? So before, you could maybe save up for about two years. But now, you got to save up. A long time, three, five, six, seven years, damn near. Damn, Woo. that's crazy. Somebody said, Call Godzilla decades of scraping by to do. So it became no longer realistic for most to hire a broker to help them unless they already had family members who had escaped before them who could save up the money on their behalf with higher paying jobs in developed economies like South Korea. Thus, at some point in the 2010s, there became a point where the overwhelming majority of North Koreans could only escape the country if they chose to do so completely on their own, without oh, any help from the outside. Damn. Require them to travel on their own across the mountainous border in the north, and then somehow make it all the way through a massive country like China, yeah. an unparalleled surveillance look, state, where they don't that. know the local language at all, in order to get towards a safe country like Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam, and never get caught by the the police along the entire way that's damn near impossible bro yeah fam like all these espionage movies and shit they got niggas in that's helping them in their earbuds they got a yeah. team of people you just doing this and you only making two thousand a year and you supposed to find a way to get through the border then find a way to travel all through china just to get to one spot oh no nah. that's it's like over it's not like a good movie though it sounds like a good movie, but with a, a realistic ending, oh, it's GG's. They end up losing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, good luck with that for most. 
As a result, the trend of people successfully escaping out of oh, North now Korea you began see why downwards with every passing year after Kim Jong-un took power, as it became increasingly difficult for people to do so. By 2019, only a total of 1,047 North Koreans managed to get out of the country to South Korea. Less than half of the numbers that had gotten out back at the beginning of the decade in 2010 and 2011. And then, beginning in 2020, the ability Damn. to escape from North Korea Not became even more blatant than it had been before. In January of 2020, only two months after the very first reported case of COVID-19 was made in China back in oh, November, North, North Korea, Korea became the very first country in the world to completely shut down and seal all of its borders, mm. citing its desire to keep the virus out of the country at all costs. Basically, all travel into and out of the country was shut down, uh -huh. every international flight that North Korea had was immediately canceled, and nearly all foreign trade with the outside world was halted. Yep. And at first glance, it kind of makes sense why North Korea was so paranoid so early about the virus. This is a country where it is estimated that around 42% of the population are currently considered to be malnourished. Yeah. One of the highest levels of malnutrition. They had no other choice but to shut down. They, they, wow, 42. They are. Bro, oh, that is a. I don't think people understand. Forty two percent of the entire country being malnourished. Yeah, bro, is wild business, bro. Yeah, so of course they had to shut down. If you already half of your population is already malnourished, healthy. Well, not even healthy. You're not healthy, but just right. regular. You add a potential life threatening virus. To, oh yeah, they had to shut everything down. But like, nope. Mm -mm. I mean, they, they down to shut shit down anyway, but this gave them that extra reason, so. Right. It's seen anywhere in the contemporary world, and of course, malnourished people are significantly more susceptible to the negative effects caused by COVID-19 yeah. than otherwise healthy people are. North yeah. Korea would only end up reporting its first confirmed case of the virus on the 12th of May, 2022. That's and only crazy. three months later in August, the regime had already self-declared its victory over eradicating it from the country, with only a very minimal 74 officially reported covid wow. deaths. Reality was was almost 74 that's crazy from what they're telling us from what we know right certainly a lot worse than that anonymous inside doctors and sources reporting to the bbc this year claimed that about one in 550 people in pyongyang actually died from covid during that outbreak in 2022 if that source is accurate which honestly who knows yeah. and if you extrapolated it out to the rest of the country it would suggest a potential covid 19 related death toll in north korea of around 45,000. Orders of magnitude worse than the officially reported number of only 74. Though I suggest that that should be heavily treated with a grain of salt. But regardless, the North Korean regime was almost certainly genuinely worried about COVID-19 getting into the country. But they also have clearly capitalized on the pandemic as an excuse to finally finish locking down North Korean society and fully isolating it from the rest of the outside world. In August of 2020, the regime established so-called buffer zones on their northern borders with China and Russia. While firm orders were given out to North Korean soldiers patrolling the borders to unconditionally shoot anybody on site attempting to either enter or leave without permission. A shoot to kill order that evidently Ooh. continues to remain in force more than three years later now today. Moreover, the North Korean regime seized on the excuse of protecting the country from COVID-19 to construct a series of vast new fortifications all across the borders with China and Russia. Satellite imagery has revealed hundreds of kilometers worth of newly constructed walls, fences, barbed wire, and guard posts being constructed all along North Korea's northern border since the pandemic began all of which have seemingly sealed off nearly all of the historical mountain passes and routes the defectors Damn. and smugglers alike have taken into and out of the country for decades. The once porous northern border has since become mostly solid, and hardly anything or anyone is crossing it at all now. So building out these vast new fortifications in the north with strict shoot-to-kill orders is not the only way that the regime has been making it increasingly impossible for any of its 25 million remaining subjects to escape. Much harsher restrictions have also been put into place on domestic travel within the country, meaning the North Koreans need proper authorization and paperwork simply to travel from province to province. Ew. And if you get caught without them, it's straight to one of the country's many prison camps. Ew. In December of 2020, the North Koreans That's cold. That's free like, labor. That's crazy. That's like us traveling to Louisiana without a permit type shit like what that's crazy wow the Korean regime passed a new law called the reactionary ideology and culture rejection act 
which heavily criminalizes receiving any information or object from the outside world and bans anyone from possessing a non-government sanctioned cell phone. Wow. Under this new law, <laughs> smuggling and distributing foreign videos or books into the country can be punished by a public execution. Even simply being caught watching a foreign video or reading a foreign book can be punished with a 10-year prison sentence oh, for labor under damn. this new law. Historically, foreign films and shows like South Korean K-dramas or dubbed American movies were smuggled in from China across the northern border on micro SD cards and then sold and watched in secret. But evidently, since the new extreme- He's just out here trying to watch the latest Avenger movie. Right. God, oh my God. They can't even watch us, bro. So Damn. they didn't even get to see, some of these niggas didn't even see Infinity War. Oh, man. They oh. In, they, they living in it. Damn, bro, they didn't even get, someone said no ITC in North Korea. Nah, facts. Nah. If we ever had a fan that's uh that somehow was watching us, chill, bro. From <laughs> Please, yeah, bro. Yeah. Just chill, bro. Don't ever chill, come relax. out and say it. Just, bro, we appreciate you, but chill. Just no, it's it's not worth it, dog. <laughs> that's wild. Niggas get caught. But <laughs> I'm failing to try not to laugh, these niggas laughing. Somebody report this niggas is suspiciously laughing. They come in there. Oh, they see us. I don't know, man. I heard somebody laughing pretty hard at nine in the morning. And I know that we didn't post nothing, or or I know you guys didn't air anything on TV that was funny. So you might want to go check their house out. I think there's something suspicious going on in their crib. Stick <laughs> is watching us. Oh, you. T Don't do it, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, like, just wondering how long true. How long can they keep this up before the society do collapse? Yeah, and eventually the people are gonna break, and eventually, bro. If the I, if the, if ninety percent, if one hundred percent of the guys have been in the army, I'm pretty sure they have feelings towards this too. Yeah. This is wild. Extremely harsh laws were passed at the end of 2020, and the northern border got much more heavily sealed. These smuggled foreign films and movies into the country have virtually stopped entirely. Moreover, yeah, infections out of the country have virtually ground to a halt since the pandemic began as well. In 2020, there were only a grand total of 229. His sister is worse. His sister's pure evil. That's what people are saying. In the chat. Successful defections wow. out of the country to South Korea. A tenth of the amount that were seen only a decade previously. And then 2021 and 2022 saw yeah. even less. How the fuck with only 63 that? and 67 successful wow. defection attempts taking place throughout the entire year. How are they doing that? Lowest levels so. ever seen in North Korea's entire history as a state since 1948. And so far this year in 2023, the trend is looking to be pretty similar as the entire first quarter between January and March, some of the best months to escape when the northern rivers are frozen over, only recorded a paltry 34 successful defections I'm taking place. I'm trying to place. figure out how All of this hell? is in comparison. Bro, you gotta, I want y'all to understand, they know it's a shoot to kill. Yeah. You have to be at your breaking point so desperate that with the beefed up security, you were willing to risk your life to get out of there, bro. Yep. That's how desperate you have to be to know, to willingly know they see me, I'm dead. There's no bringing me back. I'm dead. Yeah. And I'm willing to risk that. Man, you got to be on your own solo. You can't have nobody back there because. You risk them going to jail for you escaping. Bro. And you can't tell nobody. You can't nope. tell your family. You can't tell no of your friends. No. Because if you tell them and then someone found out that you they knew you, they screwed. Just because they left, they'll be they'll be screwed. I'm blind. I don't know what happened to my homie. I, I ain't seen that nigga in uh, the day. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. <laughs> I don't know. Comparison to the thousands of successful defections that were taking place every single year back in the early 2000s and 2010s. North Korea, in effect, has become the largest and possibly most successful prison in all of human history yeah. Yeah. since 2020. But it isn't just the new laws and the new border yeah, in the North they built that is all contributing time. to this. In truth, they're all merely yeah, no, a component always, of Kim Jong-un's no. grand concept of transforming North Korea into a truly closed digital state. 
Internet, wherein the digital realm, as well as the physical realm within North Korea, are each completely isolated and separated from the rest of the world. This has been a long time project of the North Korean state in the making. The phones that you can get in North Korea, for example, work very differently than the phones you're used to. State-sanctioned phones from North Korean state-owned companies are the only ones that you can legally possess. They can't connect to the internet, and they can't make international phone calls outside of North Korea. Moreover, they have state-sanctioned software installed on them that cannot possibly be removed, and that disables all foreign files, apps, clips, and text or sound files that were not created on North Korea's own state-owned yes. operating system, wow. Red Star. These North Korean phones will also continually and randomly take screenshots of messages and activity history that cannot possibly be deleted, and inspections of the phone are mandatory by the North Korean police. Oh, In a there ain't no such thing as Pornhub over there, my boy. You just gonna have to get it how you live because boy they oh you subscribe to an only fans get them <laughs> get them yeah. ah! no <laughs> you done bro they, there's no simps over there I just want y'all to know that there's no simping over there right. they don't they don't play that shit you simp you die you get killed for it you get killed for being you a that? simp you hear that there, dilly bro. yeah dilly <laughs> Christ, bro. Now, nah, Dilly definitely ain't surviving there. He's GG's, bro. They they put him in the camp for the rest of his life, nigga. Wait, where is Essence, Dilly from? These phones are only usable within North Korea and can only be used in ways that the North Korean regime deems acceptable. But foreign-made phones from the outside world smuggled in across the northern border were always problematic to the Kim regime's desire for this truly closed-off digital state. Foreign-made phones could actually make calls to the outside world and they could contain outside foreign-made files like videos, text, and sound. They were big business for a few entrepreneurial smugglers because using a foreign-made phone might be the only <laughs> way that a family within Appreciate North Korea that, could contact a relative of theirs who had attempted an escape previously. Uh -huh. It might be the only way to have ever known if your relative was still alive or dead. Mm -hmm. Many North Korean families would thus save up enormous amounts of money to meet these smugglers for the chance at a phone call to the outside or a chance to view or read something from the outside. Wow. No longer. By slamming shut the border and increasing the harshness of its laws, the North Korean regime has probably destroyed this smuggling process that was undermining its closed digital state ambition once and for all. And as Damn. the risks for getting defectors out have increased, so have the prices that the brokers are charging to try and help. Mm -hmm. As of 2021, the average price the Chinese brokers were apparently charging had increased more than $21,000 per defector, a full 10 times increase in the price from as recently as only 2007. And after North Korea became extremely sealed off from the outside world in 2020, the regime also began refusing all of the North Korean defectors from being returned who had been caught across the border in China, officially citing fears that they might bring the COVID-19 virus back into the country with them. There may currently be as many as 1,000 North Korean defectors being held in prisons within China near to the border, waiting to be sent back to the Kim regime when they Yo. finally accept them, where they will almost all certainly be sent to prisons and or be executed. Damn. There's no certainty right now as to how much longer North Korea will remain even more isolated than it had ever been before. It could all be the new normal state of affairs for the elusive regime. And those 1,000 defectors sitting in China may be trapped in a limbo for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, they just be sitting there. 25 million people remaining within North Korea may as well from now on be basically stuck within a completely separate universe. Yeah. The black hole on the world map that North Korea has become since 2020 has made it effectively impossible for nearly anyone within to get out or for anything from outside to get in. Aided by North Korea's own unique geography and the Kim regime's own ruthless application of laws, fortifications, and new digital technology. Everything from the outside world is now thoroughly blocked within North Korea, That's as it has wild. never been before. But it is also far from the only country that is placing restrictions on foreign media. American websites like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Wikipedia, Reddit, and dozens yep, of others well, have been blocked go. in China for years. Yeah. But now, popular Chinese websites and apps like TikTok are beginning to be similarly blocked in the United States. Mm -hmm. Just last month in May of 2023, Montana became the first U.S. state to pass legislation banning TikTok everywhere on all personal devices for everyone within the state. 
ban set to take effect in January of 2024 next year that'll mm -hmm. block access to TikTok for all of the state's 1.1 oh. million residents. Additional U.S. states can end up following Don't the get w. Montana. There are many representatives <laughs> right. and senators in the federal government who would like to see TikTok banned outright nationwide. Uh -huh. The internet should be exactly the same no matter where you are, but that's simply not the case, even if you're living in a place like the United States, Europe, Canada, or Australia. Pretty much hmm. everywhere, there are an increasing number of censorship firewalls, legislation like in Montana limiting where you can access what, and different versions of websites with different prices depending on the country or state you're in. This is most apparent when it comes to both flights, like the hub hotels, is blocked holidays. in North Carolina. Companies will use cookies to adapt their services offered wow. to you, like increasing the prices for things when you return to their website in the hope that you'll impulsively make a purchase out of fear of the price rising once again. Sometimes, airlines and hotels will offer cheaper ticket prices to people in their home countries. While alternatively, they may also spike prices if interest from the same country suddenly increases all at once. Like during specific holidays in the United States or UK that aren't holidays somewhere else. Incognito Companies mode. will also adjust their prices <laughs> based on the user's country works. because they assume that someone from a wealthier country like the US, UK, or Canada will be able to afford to pay higher prices. And this is where using a ah, VPN like today's sponsor... That was a good transition, man. But nah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's where it ended. Yeah, um, North Korea, no. Nah, that's Simple crazy, that. bro. Simple as that. I, I, I feel for the people that's there, bro. This is why it's always important to be appreciative of the situation you're in right now. Because the fact man. that you can know someone that did something and you could go to jail for it. If they're willing to lock up a two-year-old baby for the rest of their life. There's no hope for you, man. There's no hope for you. So be thankful for where you are right now. Yep. I'm willing to bet it is a million times better than living in North Korea. That's oh, yeah, bro. Great. Like I, It's the fact that you grow up. Well, a lot of people have to grow up into that. You know what I'm saying? And that's the sucky thing. I hope one day that all changes. Man, I'm praying that yeah. it changes because you can't even travel anywhere. You can't. you being locked in prison. You're born in a prison, basically. Uh -huh. And it's like, bro, I, don't, I wouldn't even have kids yeah. if I was out there or anything because it's like, bro, like, you can't let these people go travel out anyway. They got to go get to a smuggler just to get a phone call to make sure their relative is still alive. That's wild, bro. Like, nah. for real, for real. Like, nah, facts, facts, yeah, facts. I hope one day, you know, something happened to change that because that regime is nuts. That, that dictator is very, very wild. Insanity. So, that's exactly what it is. But hey, if y'all enjoyed the video, uh, as informative as it, as it is, mm -hmm. um, make sure you run up the like, subscribe, let us know what else we need to be checking out. Um, definitely like checking out things like these so that we can learn um, mm -hmm. and also kind of expand Not our world. mind and y'all as well and also commentate throughout the video. So let us mm -hmm. know in the comments. Continue to spread love, be love. Peace out. Already. This bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me